it too. I tell this story a lot to friends whenever it crosses my mind again. They think it's a good story, but I never think that they actually take it seriously. But I swear I'm telling the truth. Whether it was a dream in the end, or a hallucination, or anything, I'm not lying or making it up. My story takes place in my bedroom when I was about seven or eight. It's Saturday morning and I wake up in my bed feeling very content and cozy. It has to be about 5.30 or 6 in the morning and I rarely ever wake up so early. My parents are also late to rise so I was the only one up. My parents bedroom is very close to mine so much so that I can easily talk to them from my room. I think they did this because they know I was a very paranoid and easily scared kid. But anyway, I can hear them snoring, it's light outside and I feel very calm, so I have no reason to be afraid. I'm all tucked in bed, barely awake, listening to the birds outside and watching the light beginning to stream through my bedroom window. I'm very comfortable and happy in this moment. Now, anyone who knows me knows that I was a really weird kid. I was very paranoid and very concerned about ghosts and also near obsessed with them. I chalked up everything to being a ghost. And because of this, I didn't sleep with my back to the door of my bedroom, which I faced from the side of my bed. I did this so I could keep a close watch on any ghosties trying to enter my room as I drifted off. But at this time, I was feeling so safe and happy that I decided to turn around and face the wall. My bed is pushed up very tightly against the wall. There is basically no space between them. I turned around to face the wall and relax in the new position. Now, looking at the wall, there's a shape on it. My eyes are groggy from sleep and the room is in low light, but there is unmistakably something on my wall. I'm staring at it now as my eyes adjust and I'm waking up more. And the more I look at it, the more the shape begins to make sense. It looks like a hand. A hand on the wall with a wrist and a forearm that seems to be coming from the side of my bed. Now, with the type of person I am, you'd think I'd jump out of bed and go screaming to my parents. But in that moment, I thought, there's just no way that that could possibly be a hand. That's just ridiculous. That's not a hand. I went through what it could be while staring at it, my eyes adjusting more as I stared. Am I dreaming? I pinched myself. No, I'm not dreaming. Are there any toys in the perimeter that have hands or could look like grown adult hands around me right now? No, I don't even own any. Has my arm fallen asleep and is this my hand that I can feel? I check. No, everything about me is awake. I'm in denial. This is too scary to be happening. There's no way. My vision is perfect now and I can make out features, even in the low, early morning light of the room. The hand is grey, and the veins, they're very prominent, with a very grey, blue colour to them. The fingernails are ragged, and the whole hand looks wet and slick, faintly glistening. I know I'm not asleep, but I can't bring myself to believe what I'm seeing. Let me be clear, I am not asleep. I do not have sleep paralysis. I in fact suffer from sleep paralysis and I know what an episode feels like and this wasn't it. I did several reality checks and I was awake. In one last attempt to make sense of it all, I think to myself, this must be my blanket stuck up against the wall, somehow making the shape of a hand and my mind is just playing tricks on me. Since my blanket was the blue grey colour of the hand, I decided that this must be it, and if I were just to move the blanket, it'd stop and I wouldn't be scared. It took a minute or so for me to bring myself to do it, but I reached my own hand up to this hand, and I grabbed it very quickly and I pushed it away back to my bed. I was fully expecting to grab a soft blanket, but it was wet and cold, and my stomach dropped. When I had grabbed it, it slid further down the wall before I realized it was not my blanket, and I let go. When I let go, 
the hand slid itself back to where it was before, and its fingers twitched. Horrified and in shock, I simply turned around in my bed so I was facing the door again in absolute terror. I was too scared to scream or call out or run or anything. I just had my back to it, hoping that it would just go away. The hand I had touched it with had residue from whatever the fuck was on it. It was slimy and cold. I lay there awake for hours, staring at my door as more and more light begins to flood into my room. Eventually, after who knows how long, I hear my parents get up and my mum comes into my room happy and oblivious and she asks me how long I'd been awake for. I just say not too long and I get out of bed happy for an adult presence. As I follow my mum out of the room, I look back at my wall and the hand, it's gone. I don't tell her in fear that it might happen again. I just try to forget about it and it won't be until about three years later till I'm able to retell it. And strangely, it never happened again. If anyone has had any similar experiences, I'd love to know. Number one. I'm 27, coming up 28 in July. This all happened when I was 21. Myself and my girlfriend at the time Katie, we were living in a small flat, awaiting to move into a house together. It was around this time that she, now my ex, had watched and heard some things about Ouija boards and how fun they can be. I would like to say at this point that I'm an atheist and a skeptic, so when she asked me, can we try it, I was happy to humour her. So we got aboard and we followed all the correct procedures on how to have a good encounter with the paranormal. The first time we tried, as I expected, nothing happened. She asked me if we could try it again the following night. I wanted to make her happy, so I said that I would. So night two arrives and we set everything up and proceed with the game. At least, that's what I thought it was. This time though, there was contact. A young boy started answering us back. He claimed to be eight years old and died in the 40s during World War II. We had spoken with him for a while. Then, would you believe, his mother joined in on the conversation. They claimed to be the spiritual guides for Katie and I. After a while, we said goodbye and ended the session. She was very excited and I was still skeptical, but I think that people should be allowed to believe whatever they want to. I won't bash anyone for their beliefs, even if I don't share them. So anyway, a couple of days later, a friend of ours called Elise. She came around to the flat to meet us for some pre-drinking at mine before we went on a night out. This is when Katie told her about what had happened with the Ouija board the previous night. Elise then begged us and asked if we could all play together. So Katie got the board out and that's when our experience with the board made a drastic change. I will never even look at one of these boards again after this night. So we set up the board we went through the steps and we made contact, except instead of the very clear messages we got from the boy and his mother, we got some strange lettering this time. Then it went to a message, there is a man here. It had come from the boy. I was having to write these down in order for us to make sense of it. We called to speak to the man and, well, we did. I'm not going to go into detail about what was said. Just know that it was enough for us to end our conversation. Now, a rule for using the board is that you must always say goodbye first and never knock over or take the glass or whatever device you're using as it releases the spirit into our world, apparently. Again, I was still skeptical and I told the girls that there was nothing to worry about and that it was all in our heads until I heard the footsteps. There were clear footsteps coming from the hallway. I went straight out thinking it was the neighbor or something, but there was no one there. I then went back into the room where the girls were scared shitless. I went over and told them that there was nothing there. We then hear a very loud knock from inside the room. I turned around, still nothing. I was standing in front of the girls. Then, as quick as a shot, 
I was slammed into my cupboard. All I remember is feeling a hard shove at my ribs and my face, and I went flying. I picked myself up, and once I gathered my thoughts, we got the hell out of there. I remember being in the pub, shaking like I'd never shaked before. I should probably mention, I used to do BMX riding, hitting big jumps and never being afraid. I used to also be a cage fighter, so I don't scare easily, but I was terrified of going back to that flat. The thing is though, it didn't stop there. For months on end, living in that flat and the new house, I would hear my name being called right in my ear. The sheets were once pulled over me, and all sorts, but Katie, she had it much worse. She went from being a very heavy sleeper with no issues whatsoever to being terrified of going to sleep. She would have horrible nightmares. She would see a black shadow over her. I was awoken one night by her screaming because she woke up to someone choking her, but no one was there. And I swear in my life, I saw the hand marks on her neck. Another night, she had someone pressing on her chest and I would look at her chest as the white hand marks started to fade away, like someone had just taken their hands off of her. Since we broke up, I've never had a problem since, touch wood, but it has definitely taught me a lesson, and I'll never play with that game again. I really hope she's okay. I have spoken to her a couple of times over the years, but she never mentioned a word about it to me since we ended our relationship. G'day mates, it's Bee Buster here. Well, I hope you enjoyed the video guys. And I guess you could say that the girl in the bed, she just couldn't handle the truth. <laughs> Get it? Handle? Hand? <laughs> oh man, okay, I'm just gonna move on. <laughs> Thanks again to the Hive members that bravely shared their story for us all here. And I hope you're all doing well. Uh, for the chance to have your story featured in a video, you can send your story to my email, which is in the description below. And as always, keep them coming guys, as this channel relies upon your stories to continue. Also, please do me a favor and just state in your email what your story is about in the description and also provide me with a short written statement of consent just so that I can be above board with everything. Also, please remember to tell me in the email if you would like to remain anonymous and please change any names if you don't want particular names to be shared. As always guys, it would be awesome if you could like, share, comment and subscribe if you're new. Don't forget to follow me on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram for updates throughout the week. You can also catch me on my second channel, all of which have links in the description below. Thanks again for always tuning in guys and for all the love and support, and I'll see you mates in the next one.